Farmers in Namibia work in a very difficult environment. Feeding their livestock is becoming increasingly challenging. One of the main reasons is bush encroachment. Estimates are that more than 30 million hectares of Namibian rangeland are affected by bush encroachment, which is more than 30% of Namibia's rangeland. Our region is actually experiencing wildfire each and every year, whereby sometimes most people come into summertime, we don't have uh, grass at our farms, and sometimes we just find uh, uh, bushes at the farms. Today, most of the animal feed Namibian farmers use is imported from neighboring countries. This situation can be changed. Animal feed produced from local encroacher bush can be a huge opportunity. Farmers can produce fodder and they can control bush thickening on their land at the same time. Bush-based animal feed is an exciting topic. It relates to something that each farmer has on its farm without knowing. The only thing that needs to be done is converted from a standing bush to a usable fiber. And there are some steps that you need to do in between in order to accomplish that. But it's an exciting topic, especially when it's dry season on the farm or when it's drought season. If it's a drought situation, you normally also don't have money to, to expend on a lot of things because you're just thinking you want to get your animals through. Of course, it's a new topic again in Namibia because Namibia has seen the last four or five years of very up and down type of rainy season where people then suddenly realize, um, okay, here, here I go, I need to do something. The only thing I have is bush, I don't have grass left. A number of Namibian farmers are already producing bush feed today. The results of these pioneer activities are remarkable and prove that bush-based feed works especially during droughts as emergency feed, but also as supplement feed. In many cases, bush-based animal fodder has proven to be the only viable option for farmers during drought periods. The farm burned down in 2011 and uh, we were sitting with 650 head of cattle, a lot of game, and uh, we had to try and keep this alive. Uh, we discovered very quickly that it's, it won't work to buy uh, grass and lucerne, and uh, so we were put in a lot of thinking what, how we are going to get through this crisis. We start debushing and uh, mull the bush and try to feed it to the animals, and we discover it's actually working. Very, very important is that you harvest in the green time, so the twigs must be green. You, you want thin twigs, less than 25 millimeters. Uh, leaves on, if there's flowers and seeds on, even better. Uh, there's a lot of ways to harvest. The old axe and panga way is probably the cheapest. We have tried chainsaws, we have tried brush cutters. Um, what we use at the moment is a front end loader, pushing the bushes over. And then uh, the guys go with pangas in and hit the small sticks on. Wood has a complex cellular structure. Wood cells have strong walls as they need to support the bushes and trees growing tall, much taller than grass. Naturally, ruminating animals do not eat such woody material unless they have an affinity to browse trees, bushes or shrubs. But there are ways to turn bush into animal feed. It is best to use branches which are thinner than a broomstick after harvesting, the twigs and branches need to be passed through a mill, for example. That way, they are turned into fiber. These fibers can be mixed with supplements and fed to animals on the same day. If the fodder is to be stored, the fibers must first be dried before mixing or pelleting. Across Namibia, farmers are interested in producing bush feed. Here, they are informing themselves at a demonstration course organized by the Debushing Advisory Service. Some farmers see bush feed as a solution to overcome drought periods. Others are convinced it is a viable business option. The Debushing Advisory Service is a national platform for information on bush uh, encroachment as well as uh, uh, value chains. Uh, we focus much on uh, information dissemination. We as well do capacity development. Talking to the farmers, there have been a very high interest of knowing 
how they can actually engage into the bush to feed uh, production. And this leads us to definitely implementing such a knowledge uh, platform as we, what we have done today. We've invited the farmers to come and uh, demonstrate to them how such an opportunities can actually be taken uh, by them. Bushfeed has transformational potential in Namibia, given the limited local availability of forage and a high dependency on imports. Producing feed from encroacher bush reduces dependency on imports. In the long run, the production of bush feed also contributes to rangeland restoration. As far as we are concerned, it was a breakthrough. We have learned from a practical point of view from harvesting the bush, the equipment to use after harvesting, how it is processed eventually to get to the final product, like what I am holding here. So we expect that within a reasonable time, our farmers are able to produce this, give it to the animals, sell it to the other farmers. In agricultural economics, if feed comes more than 400 kilometers away from the point where you want to apply it, it's an economic. And in the northern communal areas where we are representing these farmers, feed is coming maybe 800 to 900 kilometers away. In this case, we are localizing, and this reduces the cost of production. And I'm really thankful for the opportunity to be able to come here and see what uh, uh, Anton is doing on the farm. And it's, it's really something that I, I will take along to my people as well, not for myself, so that at the end of the day, we all can see the potential in the bush in that anybody can actually do this. With a small machine like that one that they showed us, one person unemployed can sit somewhere and produce food or feed for the for, for livestock for others to buy or for his own three four goats uh, it's then we don't need to go spend money which we don't have so i have a solution i have what i need to do and it's just the willpower now which i think i already have that's why i came here